So the next video I'll be starting a new book called Alexander Graham Bell Invents the Telephone starting with chapter one a young man comes to Boston 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 the conductor's voice rang through the crowded railroad car the locomotive came to a rattling stop with a snort of steam and a grating of the brakes against the wheels the passengers took up their bags and began to climb down to the platform the journey from Ontario Canada had been a long one they were glad it was over it was the first week in April 1871 Alexander Graham Bell then 24 years old walked out with the crowd through the door of the steam filled noisy station into the street the spring air was fresh with the smell of the sea he paused for a moment to look up at a street sign then turned to the left he had never been in Boston before but he had studied the map he knew the way he walked quickly carrying a small leather covered bag people jostled against him on the narrow sidewalk Drays with straining horses splashed mud from the puddles in the street horse cars rattled past but Alec his hat pulled well down and the ends of his plaid muffler firmly tied beneath his chin paid no attention he was intent on his own thoughts he was well again now that was a fact that was uppermost in his mind the doctor back in London where he had lived until a year ago had said that he might not live six months both of his brothers had died of tuberculosis and Alec himself had shown signs of the disease so Alec's father had immediately dropped his work as an elocution teacher and his mother had packed up their things and sold their house in London they had brought him to Canada where he had rested for a year now I am well again he said to himself as he hurried past the row of brick houses where maids with scrubbing brushes and buckets of soapy water were scouring the flights of steps now I can work and earn my own living like anyone else I'm starting a new life the new life that Alec was starting that morning was the life of a teacher of the deaf his father had followed the same profession and had made a great success with a system of visible speech in England and Canada now Alec was to introduce that system into the United States in his breast pocket as he walked along was a letter from Miss Sarah Fuller principal of the Boston School for the Deaf at 11 Pemberton Square it offered him a position as a lecturer he put up his hand and felt the letter a little stiff against the ruffle of his coat I never thought I'd be a teacher not in the wide world he mused he had never liked school very much once I thought I'd be a musician Signor Bertolini believed I had talent he said so but after Signor Bertolini died I lost interest in music somehow and then I thought I'd give Shakespeare in recitals but that was only because my grandfather did it so well and I wanted to imitate him but somehow or other I seemed to forget that about that too and then this chance came and I wonder what it will be like at Miss Sarah Fuller's school he was glad after all that he was to be a teacher it was a wonderful thing it would be a wonderful thing to teach deaf children to speak and Miss Fuller also wanted him to lecture to teachers of the deaf so that his influence would spread to many pl places outside Boston yet even at that moment as he walked briskly toward his new work at Miss Fuller's school in a far corner of his mind other plans were beginning to take form perhaps he thought even though my days are filled with teaching I will be able to go on with my experiments and vibrations I could set up my tuning forks in my bedroom and work on them in the evening there is so much about the vibrations of the air that is not known yet he paused to let a car piled high with silver mackerel pass in front of him. Speech, after all, is nothing but a vibration, a movement of the air. He reflected. If I experiment long enough, I ought to be able to make vowel sounds with my tuning forks and consonant sounds too. And then I'd have words. Maybe I could send them along electric wire. I think the German Hemholtz did something like that. At least it seemed that way to me from the illustrations in the book I saw. I couldn't read the German. The sea wind blowing along the street tugged at his muffler. Whether he did it or not, maybe I could do it. It would be a wonderful thing to make words and send them along a wire. So he walked on and came at last to Pemberton Square and paused before a rather stately front door over which Eleven was written in a handsome gilt script. There he stopped long enough to take the letter from his pocket as if it were a calling card, then mounted the front steps and pulled the brass knob of the bell. After the doorbell had jingled, Miss Sarah Fuller herself opened the front door. Come in, Mr. Bell, she said. I'm so glad you're here. It seems as if all Boston wants to know more about teaching by visible speech. 
We expect great things of you, Mr. Bell. And she led him up the wide red carpeted stairs to his room. You'll have plenty of time to get unpacked and settled, she said. Dinner is not till twelve, and your classes won't begin till Monday. Later we'll find you another place to board. Alec looked at the modest leather-covered bag that held his belongings. Thank you. I'll be ready at twelve, he said. On Monday morning his work began, and after that, day after day, he stood before his class while the children watched or felt the movements of his lips and tried to imitate them. Sometimes he held up charts showing symbols of how their lips should be placed and watched each child making brave efforts to pronounce the words he or she could not hear. Alec had some private pupils too and gave a good many lectures to the teachers. The days went very fast for him, but though he liked his teaching and grew fond of the pupils who were sent to him, the evenings were the time he looked forward to. Then with his tuning, with his tuning fork set up in his bedroom, he experimented with vibration of the air. After all, he had the idea of getting the tuning forts going with electromagnets, metal bars wrapped with wire and magnetic by an electric current, and then of picking up the vibrations with other tuning forks set at the end of an electric wire. I believe I could send messages that way, he said to himself one night, a kind of harmonic telegraph. So it was that Alexander Graham Bell started his career as a teacher of the deaf and all the while the thought of sending words along a wire was in his mind. So that is the end of the first installment of that book.